G'day guys, it's Calvin from the Cartoon Company down under in New Zealand. I'm standing in front of yet another 1UZ and I know a little bit of history about this one. It's a Toyota Surf. It was a V6 Surf. And as per normal, it's got a 1UZ in it. Now going back in time, I talked to a man a little while ago who was building such a surf. It happened to be this one. And he was wiring an aftermarket ECU into it. It was getting different camshafts in it and a few other bits and pieces. It's since changed hands because that man went to work on boats in Australia. And another young owner has got it and somehow managed to pop the engine. He did say the last one went very, very well, and he did show me the camshafts out of it, and they definitely were not a standard camshaft. We were pulling an engine apart at the time, and very, very different. So when they went to fit the engine, they got a 20 series, a Gen 2, where the original engine was a Sora engine. And instead of just changing the lump, just the block and heads, they attempted to change some wiring as well. The wiring wasn't that tidy apparently to begin with, and now, well, the vehicle doesn't run. And it's here. No guesses what for, I'm gonna fix it. Let's have a look. This is what I have to work with. That's the old EGR on it. I, I haven't needed to unplug any of the injector plugs as normal. I happen to have two ECUs in here. A Sora one and a 20 series Celsius LS400. Oh, I was LS400 because it had um, EGR and it looks like this. Here are the body plugs of the surf, and as you'll notice, uh, they, they don't exist. There's wiring heading off there. Oh, we've got an aftermarket temp gauge here. And we've got that underneath the dash. I am not excited by that. And I have a box of parts in the back. Hmm. Oh, hey. And a G4 Link Extreme. Oh, automatic. It's an automatic. It's time to come up with a plan. That plan is to fix it, it's to wire it with an aftermarket ECU and a factory ECU to control the transmission. Just for fun, this transmission is not matched with the ECU that I'm going to use. I'm going to use the 20 series one because they work better. There's the plan. Let's get into it. I've not long ago done a video on fuel pressure regulators. And I mentioned about using the Gen 1 fuel rails and the Gen 2 fuel pressure regulator. Look what we've got on this one. Gen 2 with the push on hose, that's the return line there, on Gen 1 fuel rails. She's coming apart. 
just a piece of hose and a, probably got a bolt on the end of that. Just a bit of bolt. Can we see it? Yeah, just got a bolt pushed in the bottom of that. Cable ties holding plugs together. Igniters that suit the Sora, but not the Gen 2 in ECU. Uh, we've got a relay. We've got these relays, which is something to do with the air conditioning. We've got spare wires just hanging out. And a big bank of relays for fans and air conditioning. Extra fans down here. This uh, engine's got the big alloy radiator with a fan on the back. There's a fan on the front. Got the two air conditioning fans down sitting uh, horizontal. There's a lot of crap in this. Also, it's got a breather. It's got a charcoal canister. And I thought the V6, the return line, might have been on this other side. I need to sort out which, which where the hoses go as well. I did see in the back there's a set of Gen 2 fuel rails, which might suit this project a bit better. How's your day going? It's Detective Calvin here today. Let's see what we can find. Let's see what clues we can find. So we know this engine has been changed. You can see here uh, the broken ventilation hose. This is a Gen 2, Gen 2 tablet covers. And we know it's Gen 2, the, the coil's pointing forward, so that's, that's Gen 2. Generation 2. We have these igniters that have been wired in. They are a Generation 1 Sora SC400. They weren't going to work with that ECU. We have this idle speed control unit, which is the later one. We have this manifold. Nice paint job. Early stepper motor on it. Idle speed control valve. Idle air control valve. The lower manifold, however, has got the Gen 2 fuel rails, the round cast fuel rails. And you see it's got this is the Generation 2 bracket for the, um, the diagnostic. But it's had the Generation 2 EGR put on it. Rock hard. And there's a cold start injector. So that is a generation one top, generation two bottom I'm picking. So Lexus, two pin there. So Lexus, it would have had a, a fan idler on it, but it's actually had the front, the hydraulic pump with the different idler put on it. But look at that, watch this. Sticking my finger. In here, give it a bit of a turn around. Uh oh! Hmm. Hmm. I think that's bad. I wouldn't put an engine in without checking it properly when it had that black gunge through the idle speed control. We also have, over here, look at this wiring. So this little relay, that relay there, has this blue wire that comes out. Comes out and it goes to the black orange, which is going to be power feeds for coils or injectors. I'm guessing, well that's all falling apart, oh it's injectors, and coils, so that's coils and injectors, it also has this output, going to this big red wire here, it goes inside, and that one, 
So that's all the, the normally the computer controlled stuff. So that was never going to work. Might have started, but it was never going to be right. This one, this is a good one. I like this wire. Starter go wire. I need that because I'm going to compression test this engine. By the way, I didn't break that. That was already like this. Oh! Pretty dark in here. If you go back here, there, there's the hose clamp. It's not down there where it should be. So even if this did get going, that hose was going to leak or fall off, and it was going to blow up. I'm, in a, I'm possibly not in the best mood right now. Nah, it's fine. I'm going to make it awesome. I'm going to fix it. I'm going to get some transmission wiring out. See what comes out. Some of my removal has been with my side cutters. I'm good with that. We're actually going to make this vehicle a nice vehicle and make this engine run properly. Oh, and I've got to get that front crank loom out. Probably not going to show you how I do it on this one. Oh, alternator wiring. There's another issue, but it's not on my list right now. I think is alternator wiring here, and it's quite close to that header. They're quite sexy headers going around that steering. Quite, quite sexual. Look at that. Whoa. Again, again, looking at it isn't going to fix it. I'm crawling underneath, getting that transmission wiring out. Let's have a look once we get the wiring loom out. Oh, did I show you the back of the throttle body? I don't know if I did. We'll have a look. We have a serious contender in the race for the worst wiring job of the year. It also goes along with a very poorly prepped engine. Let's get it on the bench, and I'll show you some what I found. The standard broken plugs, these were also pressed, pushed onto the incorrect igniters. I am not going under that red tape. I just don't have time. Mm. I think, I'm quite certain that was EGR. EGR's removed. Oh, and in the background, um, hmm. Yes, well, and that's just downstream from another joint under there. I did mention about soldering or crimping in another video. Whoever did that shouldn't do neither. In fact, they shouldn't be allowed to wire cars at all. I think there's some more nasties down in the gearbox area. So we have a shifter shift selector plug or gear selector combo plug and another one hmm. we have a eight pin solenoid plug like the UCF20 and a six pin solenoid plug like the Sora uh, I saw all those tapes. Uh, I have a plan. I've been thinking about this. I actually already had a plan before I started working on this car. And the plan is to take this and throw it away. Problem solved. All of it into the rubbish bin. Then I'm going to mount 
the link ECU in the cabin somewhere. There's a lot more nasty stuff in here, which I'm going to show you tomorrow in the light. And in here, there's much more nasty stuff in here. Hmm. It's a mess. This is actually a really, really tidy truck on the outside. Underneath, she's been hammered with the salt water at the beach. But externally, it's a really, really tidy truck. Now, remember our water temp gauge? And the remember that water temp gauge? Yep, that's not going to work. And I got that out. Even though it's going in the rubbish. <laughs> this could be a video on wiring stuff ups. I'm going to make it about using the stock ECU to run the transmission when you've got an aftermarket ECU on the, on the engine. I might do a, a little bit on the link wiring side, but right at the moment, I'm going to get in and I'm going to belt out a wiring one for it. My priority and my commitment to the customer was make the engine run first and give them a list of everything else. The transmission can work without wiring good enough for the moment. Well, it'll have three gears. It'll allow the vehicle to move and see if things down there actually work. Now I'm going to start planning and do some wiring towards that. My focus is going to be getting the engine running. I need to allow for air conditioning and extra fans, somehow some power supplies, and then there's the tidying up of the rest of the vehicle. But priority number one, get an engine running, which should have been done on the floor to know it's any good. Tomorrow, my assistant is going to do a compression test on the engine, and regardless of whether it's good or not, it still needs a wiring loom. So they can check that while I'm wiring. So I'm into it. So you've seen plenty of link wiring. I'll come back uh, once I've made some good progress. So here we have, have the return line. Okay, and it's going into this hose here. The hose down there. But really interesting. We have, have this other hose over here on this side. We have this hose right here. So from the beginning, I suspected that that was the return line and the one on the other side is the breather line for the fuel tank. I've had a couple of surfs, I've worked on a couple. So we've got the charcoal canister, which normally has a bracket here, three bolts, and this normally bolts here like this, right? And if we do that, you see the, the breather off the bottom, or the, the, the drain off the bottom of the charcoal canister? would fit perfectly into this hose, this pipe, which runs along the chassis and dumps out. I kind of suggest that this should live here. There was a piece of rubber hose right here. This bit here. Funnily enough, it would go from there quite nicely, it would sit there, and come up onto the charcoal canister really nicely. So that kind of points towards that should go there. So we're going to take this return line off, and we're going to change it to the other side. At the same time, we're going to change the fuel rails to the 20 series that are off this engine. We're also going to pull the spark plug covers off, which, and I've talked to the customer, we're putting individual coils on it. So we're ditching the factory coils, getting individuals. So you're going to cut through there, so make this cover and this cover separate. And there's a little lip at the back, we're going to take that off as well, so the wiring can come in nicely. This, these hoses here, these pipes, which are for the back heater, they're coming out. You will remove them in a destructive manner. I want this intake manifold off, because we're going to give it a tidy up, we're going to build a new loom underneath, and we're going to put those rails on as well. Okay. This stuff here, for all the air conditioning, I think I've mapped it out. Oh, this is going to be rebuilt, we're going to put a new one through there. Take the intake manifold off, make sure we either get the vacuum cleaner or the air duster and blow all the crap out along the sides. Top half off first, then take the bottom off. 
We'll build some new looms and we'll do the, the, the stuff inside there. Take, we're going to take this cover off and this cover off and we're going to cut the center brackets inside there. There's a bolt up here that needs to be um, sorted out. Um, what else are we doing at this stage? And I'll go to, to remove some wiring. You've got those lines. Oh, there's the interiors coming out to take because there's the heater box. This piece of trim comes out and that heater unit that's under there. I'm thinking of mounting the ECU under there. Mounting an ECU in this in this cavity. So put the aftermarket one where this crappy wiring is, which I'm going to destructively remove. Yep. One thing that's really cool about V6 serfs mm -hmm. is they have an internal handbrake. So they don't have the handbrake popping through the firewall on here. Mm -hmm. It's actually tucked inside with the roller inside, so that's really cool. I'll, I'll get you some bungs for this too. Blank these. Okay. There's this one here. Oh, there's another one over here with a bolt sticking out of it. This one? It's yep. getting blank too, but it'll be easier to do when we've got it in pieces. So the handbrake roller on the V6 is inside like that, which gives you better firewall clearance. And then I notice wiring wrapped around the steering column as well. Look at that rubbing on the steering column. That is cool. That's awesome. Uh, the silicon mounted knock sensors. And I can see the starter motor. Check it out. I think it's been resined in. The start trigger, I think, is resined into the starter motor. Oh, man. Oh, man. You know what these are? I've got a yellow one. I've got a black orange. And I've got what was a white one. They almost look like alternator. Loops back around. And there's a big wire in here that looks alternator-ish. See, look, it's got a big... Because alternate on these, this was a V6, the alternator was here. So that could very much be alternator wiring. And we've got a twist with... I had tape on it. And then we've got another join there. So we'll just cut it there. And yellow is normally an alternator light. And it goes off to the other side. That's another ignition there for the suppressor. Because the coil was normally here. Multiple holes here. The starty start wire, see this one here? That has to come out, it does the loop under the guard. Instead of just popping through here, it does the loop under the guard. Where other ones just went straight through the firewall. So the inner guard needs to come out so we can get that. Unless I can just pull it from in here. This one. It, it, it had sleeving on it yeah. when it left. There's now sleeving stuck under the inner guard. Oh no, I've got another random wire. Oh, it won't be attached for long. Attach this. Relay? That relay is getting removed. That relay can leave. Still dotted to decipher those, and I reckon that's I reckon that's alt matter, eh? I've got more random wires getting off under the guard. And I got some wires going up into the heater circuit too. And one of them heads off with this random wire there.
bet you I know where this bolt goes. Bolt where? I bet you this bolt goes here. It does. It's in that bracket. More crap removed. And I found the Sora wiring loom that was running in this vehicle at one point. Yep, it's going to the same place as the rest of it. That leaves. There's a rotor in there, so you've got to take the cap off and then slice through there. And you leave it so you've still got the bolt there. So that's why we're putting it back in like that. Okay, so really easy. Three bolts. Oh, three screw screws, two screws inside. Take that off, and then we'll cut it up. I am back. And I've managed not to burn the surf. It's definitely got the prize for the worst wiring of the year. And it definitely is in the top 10 of worst ever. This mess is for the air conditioning. Power supply in was off the radio breaker. This is for the fans. And it zigzags under here, under here. Pops up by the headlight, over to the relays. Here's the fan relays, there's the factory ones. Look, factory, it's own loom, comes down here. Look, there it is, there's the aircon resistor. What am I gonna do? That's going to leave, that's going to leave. Actually, that all is going to leave. We're throwing most of it out. Alternator wiring is here. Does this run? We'll have an investigation in there, see what sort of join we've got. It's the feed to the fuse box. And it comes across here to that cable there. It's not big enough. Cutout switch for the aircon is here, and it just sort of randomly lay in there. Just, just, just put it in there. Alternator wiring. That must be the light. Some of the alternator wiring is already in here, and then it's been doubled back through this mess. Inside, I have had a prune. The easiest way was to just to cut everything out and then I'll search for what I needed. Normally, the front diff has wiring that comes up through the engine loom. That has been run in over this side and it goes into the cabin. So I'm crossing my fingers on the four wheel drive at the moment and leaving that alone. I could build up new looms across the front here and give this a tidy up. But realistically, I think the very best option for me is to pull this front loom out, run the wires in there correctly, and make it work. It's going to take nearly the same amount of time to do an external loom, and it won't be as neat. So... I'm going to pull it apart, pull some looms out, fix it, but first I am going to remove some of this wiring. I'm going to recycle those fan relays, but instead of bridging power from this side, I'm, I'm going to get it from that side because I can do it with much shorter wire. <laughs> Where's the ignition power? C 
cents. And ignition are in there. It looks so much better without wiring in here. We'll see what it looks like when I put the wiring back in. Tappet covers are coming off. And there's quite a bit of build up of crap. inside here which is not ideal at the same time I was under here and there is all the exhaust outside layer of the exhaust pipe the easiest way to get stop it from falling in my eyes was just to knock it all off and the rear heater pipe because we're doing stuff inside on these ones on the early ECU they were running they have a kick down switch and someone's actually taken the time to fit a kick down switch to the accelerator pedal so like at three quarter throttle it closes the contacts on that switch throttle position and the kick down it kicks the trans down and that's why a lot of transmissions these uz transmissions on the early ones don't kick down nicely because they don't have a kick down switch fitted and that's why i use a 20 series because you don't need it so I'm gonna we're gonna remove that wire that gets another one wrapped around this was used must have just been used as a generic switch for something like dual map or something I'm not sure that was going to interview. I just don't know what that green wire does go into this right here. I've got well, we've got these ones what have we got wires are there some just behind there somewhere is there a black and a brown? It loops behind the handbrake cable. Is it cut off? Um, there's wires going everywhere. There's wires off the four-wheel drive. Whoever did this originally cut wires that were in the engine loom. Ah, oh, I will solve it. The sun is going down. Another day has disappeared on this truck, trying to sort out all its issues. But I'm winning. I'm back for the night shift. Let's have a little bit of an update. The engine loom is at a point where it's ready to have connectors done. And we've decided that it's getting individual coils. It's not something that uh, I think is a bad idea. I think I. In fact, I think it's a really good idea. The leads on this vehicle were 1995. By my math, that's 25 years ago, 20, 24. We're almost at the end of 2019, close to 25 years ago. It's not gonna hurt to give it an upgrade. On the truck. Tablet covers are off. To get them out, the brake booster was removed on this side. Now watch this. If that's up in the top, what's in the bottom? And this really goes to show why you need to prep your engines. On the old engines, I pretty much always pull the tablet covers, put a new set of gaskets in it, pull the sump, clean it, check the pickup. It's a pretty much a must have. This one has already been fitted, as you can see, there's an engine in the hole, it doesn't look like the sump's been off. So what does the pickup look like? My job was to wire it, and there's been so much other stuff, and I've still got to get this wired. The compression on this engine, it's good enough. I'm picking once it starts and runs, it will be okay. We're fitting an oil pressure sensor, so I'll be looking at that oil pressure, putting in some safeties because there's a bit of an unknown. Throttle body it was a left hand drive one. Where did that come from? Where did this engine come from? Uh, a few other little nasties. Apparently, you. Put silicon around this fitting on your past air pump. 
This is the better of the two tappet covers. Yeah. And this is the rubber seals. Can you guess why I do tappet cover gaskets on these these days? Yeah. Spark plugs are out. Because you have to take the spark plugs out to do a compression test, funnily enough. This one has been water cooled. This one, that's a Denso. And these are NGK. Maybe one day I'll do a video on spark plugs, but it tends to get guys fired up too much, so I've been avoiding it. Simple topic, very emotional for a lot of people. I have a pile of clean parts. This, it had covers on here and here. They're not needed, that's just a gallery. It's an empty gallery in the back of there. This and this one will be blanked. There's no more little fitting with a bolt in it on here. That's gone. There's a box of rubbish, including the back heater. I was hopeful that we could fit the stock ECU by the back heater. I can't. It's, it's not going to work. I'll have to come up with another plan. Inside, whilst it's dark, it's actually a lot neater. There's some wires on this side that I have to decipher. So I'm back into my wiring. I'll do a few more hours. It's a nice clear night. Try and turn out a loom. Try and turn out a harness. And get this thing in the hole. And get this engine making some noise. This is kind of noisy, but I wanted to get some of the crap off this engine. Brake clean, vacuum cleaner, and a toothbrush. If you're doing this at home, probably don't use your best vacuum cleaner. My one is a wet and dry. It can handle all the stuff. And flammable liquids. It hasn't caught fire yet, but if it does, I'll catch it on video, if I can. I'm not going to be beaten by a surf. Though this one is fighting. Just makes for a bigger challenge. What have I done? We've cleaned some parts. And I want to feel like I'm making some progress forward, so I'm going to put some parts back into it. In here I've checked the cam timing, the starter's gone back in, and a new wiring loom for the starter motor and knock sensors. We've got a cable here, look, Ugh. running around, main battery power, and I've shortened up the stereo wires, they're not my department, but I just put a crimped a new terminal on, got them out of my way. Got some earth straps. A little bit of recycling of what was on here. I'll probably put an extra one down underneath as well. There are two there. There's an oil pressure sensor gone in, which did result in a new gasket down there. Spark plugs, of course, out. Um, I think that's fine. We, we could put the back, back in, couldn't we? And a worn out Denso, and the rest are Stuffed NGK, I think, out of the engine that blew up. So I've got some new, brand new Iridium Denzos going in. Spark plugs can be a touchy subject. I use the uh, genuine originals most of the time, and I get an awesome result. I'm putting new ones in because when the back coil goes in, then the booster goes in, it's not easy to get it in and out. So it's going in and it's going in once. So 
and I better get the tune pretty right pretty quickly. Vacuum cleaned as much of the extra carbon off the top of the engine and I broke the carbon off number three valve. There was a big chunk of it in there. So I got on with my screwdriver and, and got rid of that. Yeah, it'll still go. Crossing our fingers is a valid mechanical technique, isn't it? It's the one you see. It'll be good. So some parts to fit. Uh, the water crossover gaskets. These two were, were, probably would have been okay. These ones. Possibly not so much. Physically rusting away. So new ones of those. Oh, I can't do it. Problem solved. With a bit of uh, rubber grease, because uh, lubing things up makes it go in easier. The low ring on the dipstick. Distributor cap brackets have been cut down. And I'm running both cam sensors because I've still got the stock ECU to go in there. Crossover pipe, water temp sensor for the link, ready to go back on. Rear pipe was a EGR type. Now, these had covers on. It's just a gallery. There's no water through there. It's just an exhaust gas gallery. So it doesn't actually need covers on it. And they look like I was welding when I was drunk. And I don't drink. They're that good. And blindfolded. I couldn't put them back in. Intake manifold. We're going to talk about injector fitment, but the intake manifold is clean as well. Fuel pressure rig ready to go back in. Over here, I've glued these little fittings back in. Just you don't want them falling out. I'm going to do a video on changing the tappet covers, changing the tappet cover gaskets. So look out for that video as well. Let's put some parts together. cable I will stop you immediately it is a line pressure cable line pressure cable line pressure cable Tappet covers on this thing. I'm having some success. The surf is not going to beat me. And look what the engine loom now looks like. Ta da! Individual coils tucked in behind the fuel rail. Looking pretty good there. You'll notice I've got the second cam sensor in, throttle body, and I've probably got to solve that problem. Look at that. That is looking good. And I've got the engine looking good and coming back together. I just wanted to make some progress. So it looks like this. All that crap over there gone. Still no radiator, still no front loom. You notice it looks a lot like old yellow. Temp sensor's done. Crank. Oh, the second cam sensor, right hand cam sensor, tucked in. Temp sensor. Starter motor loom. Ready for an intake manifold. 
The intake manifold is, is sitting here, surrounded by injectors. This is the perfect opportunity to do a video on the different injectors that do fit into a 1UZ manifold. So I'm going to do that. The loom's ready to install. Let's sort out that video, mount an intake on it, put the injector rails, which I've been using to wire it on because I couldn't already do it because I needed it for wiring. It's like a massive jigsaw. And one part needs to be finished for another part, but I can't finish that part because another part's waiting. But I'm moving forward, getting there. We're going to nail this. Inside, we're looking good. Link's going here, and I think the factory ECU's going, going there. Got a whole lot of wiring, which was on this side, on that side to sort. I'm not going in there. That's yucky. I hope there's clips somewhere for this heater box. Woo, it says it's all falling apart. This is the circuit opening relay for the fuel pump circuit. So I've got to nail that too and work out what was done. And you'll notice this. Oh yeah. I've got a pretty good plan. Kind of in my head. Let's get an intake manifold done. Let's get a wiring loom sitting in. I may just fire up the engine. I think once we get this thing powered up, it'll allow me to check a lot more. Got some of it sorted, but not as much as I would like because major idiot factors. Whoever originally wired this just really made it as hard as they could for anyone moving forward. So I've got to fix that and uh, keep my eyes open for anything that might cause issues. Some of it's getting listed, some of it's getting fixed as I go along. Because there's, I've got to draw a line somewhere. But I'm feeling good about it. And uh, put the coils in. Oh yeah. Woo -hoo -hoo. Let's put a loom in there. Ooh, a harness. coils in we have clearance we have the map sensor line ran through here Have you sorted all the vacuum hoses? Mm -hmm. Might tuck that one either at the back or underneath so it's not so visible. Nearly. What? Nearly. I'm nearly done. Nearly. It's male nearly. Dangerous way, eh? Yeah. <laughs> Battery is in. Jump wire. 
Let's make it go. Fuel pump bridging. It did take me a little while to work out why our fuel pump wasn't working. I did fire it up. I had a little map sensor fault, so I addressed that. Ooh, listen to that. Not bad, eh? It runs. That's on a total base map. I just threw some reasonable numbers in. It starts, it idles, it revs. That's pretty bloody good. Whew. Bit of a relief as well. It's a bit smoky out the back at the moment, but it's just been all in pieces. So I'm not too worried about that at this stage until it's fully hot. More wiring to do. But yeah, big step forward, really happy.